Think it's all just CGI and production tricks that bring your favorite superheroes to life on screen? From damaged vocal cords, to broken bones, to an actual death on set, you won't believe how dangerous playing a superhero can actually be. Jamie Alexander, who plays the warrior Lady Sif in the Thor franchise, suffered various injuries while filming Thor The Dark World. Luckily, the film's production could work around her, giving the actor time to recuperate without delaying the production of the movie. Alexander was an athlete in her youth, so she carried that physical prowess with her into her acting career and has always been willing to do her own stunts. I've got this completely under control! Describing the injuries she suffered on the set of Thor The Dark World, Alexander told Page Six, It was raining. It was dark outside. It was like five in the morning. I went down a metal staircase and slipped and slipped a disc in my thoracic spine and chipped 11 of my vertebrae. I knocked my left shoulder out of place and tore my rhomboid on my right side. It took me out of filming for a month. These severe injuries didn't stop Alexander from reprising her role in the Thor franchise, nor did they keep her from taking on another stunt-intensive role when she agreed to play Jane Doe in Blindspot. She also sustained numerous injuries from her stunt work on that series. Despite the pain, she loves doing her own stunts and takes pride in her physical endurance. Noah Centineo has enjoyed major success in recent years thanks to his lead role in Netflix's The Recruit and his performance as Adam Smasher in Black Adam. But this triumph comes with costs. Centineo told Jimmy Fallon on The Tonight Show that he suffered a pretty painful injury while shooting a scene as Adam Smasher under the sweltering Atlanta sun. He explained that he was trying to add some flair to the scene by pretending to hit his knee on a parked car while he was running. And I like spin around like, ah, like that hurt. Yeah. My arm goes up and then dislocates. <laughs> Medics struggled to get Centineo's shoulder back in its socket due to his tight costume. Filming was paused as they cut the sleeve open. After 13 tries, they finally popped his shoulder back in, only for Centineo to immediately pop it back out by lifting his arm to cheer. Luckily, his shoulder was easier to fix the second time. Although it's a fairly minor injury in the grand scheme of things, production ground to a halt while the medics dealt with Centineo, and the wardrobe department surely had to replace his damaged suit. Robert Downey Jr. might seem invincible on screen, but he actually broke his ankle while filming a stunt for Iron Man 3. Guy Pearce, who played Aldrich Killian in the film, revealed further details to GQ. Robert broke his ankle in the middle of that film because he had to do a stunt where he had to jump from one platform down to another platform and be on a cable. They wanted to rehearse it and he said, no, I don't need to rehearse it, and he jumped, and the guy holding the cable wasn't ready or something and he landed hard. Interestingly enough, the take where Downey broke his ankle actually made it into the movie. After the film was done, Downey told media outlets his body held up fine and joked that the delay in production gave them an opportunity to work on the script and make Iron Man 3 into a better movie. I did alright. I broke my ankle once, but then that gave us time <laughs> to uh, do some more script revisions. Believe it or not, Chris Evans almost turned the iconic role of Captain America down. But once he was on board, Evans embraced the role's more physical aspects, even doing some of his own stunts in Captain America The First Avenger. The actor told MTV News, the good thing about Cap is that most of his abilities are rooted in what a human being is capable of. He's not flying, he's not shooting fire. For the most part, the stunts involved were hand-to-hand -hand combat, so any time I can put the gloves on and get in the ring, I'll do it. Unfortunately, Evans injured his arm while filming Captain America Civil War. In a pivotal scene, Steve Rogers tries to stop a helicopter from taking off with his bare hands. Evans told Entertainment Tonight, That was in the first week of filming, and I actually messed up my arm doing it. I really did. It's a fake helicopter, obviously, but it was drifting beyond the ability of control. I tweaked a little something. To this day, I'm still messed up. Notably, Robert Downey Jr. wasn't surprised by this injury. When he arrived at the Civil War set and saw what Evans had been filming, the actor immediately knew that this shot was risky. Luckily, after Evans sustained his injury, Downey was there to help. Hugh Jackman has suffered a litany of injuries playing Wolverine over the years. During the production of X-Men, Jackman smashed his ear and, in a separate instance, injured his groin after getting caught in a stunt harness. The actor told Yahoo, That was pretty brutal. I screamed so much and they kept going because they figured it was me primal yell emoting. Then, during the production of X2 X-Men United, Jackman discovered just how dangerous Wolverine's metal claws truly are when he cut the skin next to his eye, which left a scar, and his upper thigh. Jackman talked about the latter injury on The Graham Norton Show, explaining that it happened while filming a nude scene. He turned a corner, saw a group of female crew members who had gathered together as a joke to surprise and embarrass him, and reflexively tried to cover himself. And of course, the first thing I did was like, oh! <laughs> I did cut myself on the end of time. Oh! External injuries aren't the only type Jackman experienced while playing Wolverine. During an interview with the BBC, he admitted, 
I've done some damage to my voice with Wolverine. My falsetto is not as strong as it used to be, and that I directly put down to some of the growling and yelling. My vocal teacher in drama school would have been horrified with some of the things I did. Jason Momoa suffered multiple injuries while filming Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom, telling Ellen DeGeneres that he scratched his cornea during production, and that's just for starters. He elaborated, I messed up my eyes, just got something in it that kind of cut it up. And I gotta get surgery on a hernia. I got ribs out. I'm just getting beat up. Momoa assured DeGeneres the injuries were well worth it, however, saying, It's gonna be a great movie. You're gonna love it. DeGeneres playfully gave Momoa a hard time for getting injured in every movie he seems to make. Momoa chalked it up to his advancing age and passion for filmmaking. It's rough stuff, but he considers it worth it. Like many movies affected by the COVID-19 pandemic, The Batman saw its fair share of difficulties during production. Some of them even predated the pandemic. Star Robert Pattinson told GQ, I broke my wrist at the beginning of it all doing a stunt, even before COVID. So the whole first section was trying to keep working out, looking like a penguin. I remember when that seemed like the worst thing that could go wrong. Soon, the film was shut down because of the pandemic, giving Pattinson plenty of time to nurse his broken wrist and quarantine with the rest of the world. Then, after the movie finally went back into production with new regulations, Pattinson tested positive and production was paused again. The Batman shoot ultimately encompassed a staggering 18 months, leaving the star feeling beleaguered and burned out. In the end, breaking his wrist during a stunt turned out to be one of the smaller challenges Pattinson faced while bringing this new iteration of the caped crusader to life during a global pandemic. Jeremy Renner was in the news in early 2023 after getting injured saving his nephew from being crushed. But this real-life hero has also made a name for himself by doing his own stunt work, and sometimes, these stunts result in injuries. Renner discussed his commitment to doing his own stunts with Howard Stern. You'd want him to, like, be pulled out of a movie because, you know, see some yeah. guy, guy with a bad wig trying to do the stunt. This incurs a major price tag, however. Renner broke both his arms while filming the action comedy Tag. Astonishingly, he went back to work the same day. Renner has gotten beaten up while playing Hawkeye, too. While filming a stunt for The Avengers, the actor tore a muscle in his back and had to take a break from filming. Director Joss Whedon told The Hollywood Reporter, His fight work is wonderful, precise, heroic, and you seldom have to double him. But one day he just turned wrong and his whole body shut down. He was in enormous pain and we had to shut that sequence down and shoot it a couple of weeks later. Ruby Rose sustained a spinal injury while filming the first season of Batwoman. The actor had surgery for two herniated discs, sharing on Instagram, A couple of months ago, I was told I needed an emergency surgery or I was risking becoming paralyzed. I had herniated two discs doing stunts, and they were close to severing my spinal cord. I was in chronic pain and yet couldn't feel my arms. After this injury, Rose completed filming season one and departed the series. According to Vulture, she later alleged that she was pressured to return to production only 10 days after surgery and that the CW production was unsafe. Yeah, you know, it, it, it stings a little, just uh, for reference. Warner Brothers Television Group denied Rose's allegations and claimed the actor was let go due to colleagues' complaints. Notably, Rose isn't the only actor who was hurt on set. A production assistant was left paralyzed after being injured by a descending lift. We may never know the truth about the set of Batwoman, but we do know that Rose required surgery for injuries sustained while playing the titular character. While filming Black Panther Wakanda Forever in Boston, Letitia Wright, who plays Shuri, suffered a concussion and a shoulder fracture. Initially, no one expected Wright's injuries to affect the production of the blockbuster Marvel movie. But in November 2021, production on the Black Panther sequel was temporarily halted so Wright could recover. After Chadwick Boseman's tragic death, Marvel decided not to recast the role of T'Challa. This meant Shuri embarked on a larger role in the sequel, eventually taking on the mantle of the Black Panther herself. Because of this increased profile, the production needed to give Wright, now the star, ample time to heal from her injuries. Like many movies filmed during the pandemic, Black Panther Wakanda Forever also experienced several delays and setbacks, in addition to being subject to ever-shifting regulations. This forced everyone involved to be flexible. Marvel Studios executives sent a note to the cast and crew of the production detailing the need for a delay in filming. It read, Letitia had a frightening accident on our set during a stunt back in August. It was a reminder of the importance of safety at all times in our work, which we know you understand and are committed to. What we had initially thought were minor injuries turned out to be much more serious. Happily, Wright was able to recover, and Black Panther Wakanda Forever made it to theaters. In very rare circumstances, something worse than serious damage befalls actors. Tragically, this is what happened to Brandon Lee when he was filming The Crow in 1993. The Crow follows the titular hero, an avenging angel with goth rock swagger as he seeks revenge for his own death. Suddenly, I heard a tapping as of someone gently rapping 
rapping at my chamber door. During production, Lee was shot with a prop gun that accidentally contained the tip of a dummy round in the barrel of the firearm. He died about 12 hours later. His death raised major concerns about firearm safety in the film industry and remains one of the saddest Hollywood stories of the past few decades. District Attorney Jerry Spivy declined to press charges against the movie's production company. As he told the New York Times, There's part of me that wants to file charges and have a trial. But from a purely legal point of view, I would not feel comfortable. Lee's mother, Linda Lee Cadwell, filed a civil suit and settled out of court. Paramount Pictures backed out of distributing the film because of Lee's death, but it made $94 million at the box office and gained a cult following. In an eerie example of life imitating art, Lee, like his character, was young, talented, and on the cusp of stardom when his life was cut short. He will always be remembered for his role in The Crow.